If I haven't said it before, I am Karen Reinhold. I am uh, the chair of the Senate. Sometimes I forget to credit myself. And before I, we continue with the meeting, I want to call your attention to a few things that are going on um, with the Senate and the university. Uh, we have the Senate elections going on right now. I, they started today. And the process is very simple. So if you have seen the link in your email, please vote. It should take you two seconds. We have two forums coming up, one on April 10th on the state of IT, and another on April 23rd on the state of the arts and humanities. And um, the big event, which is the president's inauguration on April 13th. And I hope you all come to all of them. <laughs> Uh, it makes it, the, the inauguration is going to be um, a very much expected event, and the forums require your interaction and see if you're interested in learning what's going on and uh, contribute to the discussion. There are a couple of other events that I want to call your attention. Uh, the first one is the, there is a fundraising for the local food uh, banks. Uh, the, uh, those are happening April 14th, and um, there are two. One is a race, a 4K race, and the other one is a walk, and it's called the mindful, Mindfulness Walk. So you can participate according to which level you feel more comfortable. And um, so we would like to see more community participation there. They are sponsored by Sodeco and um, the UUP. Then there are two undergraduate conferences. One is SUNY wide on April 20th and 21, and the other one is our own on April 27th. So if you have undergraduate students who are ready to present their work, this is a wonderful place to do it. And that concludes my announcement, and uh, we present President Rodriguez. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being here. Buenas tardes. Muy bien, muy bien. Thank you all for being here this afternoon. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Karen, and thank you all again so much, so very much for being here this afternoon. Um, and also, uh, thank you for everything that you do for our institution and everything that you do to ensure the success of our students. I also want to thank uh, Karen and the University Senate. Uh, I think it was last week or so they sent out an email encouraging faculty and staff to participate in the March Matchness uh, from the uh, Development Office and uh, we received great response. So Karen, thank you and thank you to the University Senate for such a great response and to our faculty and our staff. So thanks very much for all that. We appreciate Appreciate it. I also want to make uh, two introductions, if you allow me to. Uh, and today we're joined by Todd Foreman, our new Vice President for Finance and Administration. Todd, please arise. And Todd just joined us quite literally on Monday. He comes from SUNY Oneonta, where he was the Vice President for Finance and Administration. It's a great pleasure to have you here, Todd, and we look forward uh, to you generating all the money that we need in order to continue to move the university forward. So with that challenge, bienvenido, welcome. <laughs> I also want to uh, recognize Dr. David Holdgrave, our new Dean uh, for the School of Public Health. David. Uh, and David joins us, uh, he was a faculty member and scholar researcher at John Hopkins University. We're delighted to have you as well, David. Thank you for being with us here today. Uh, so we have a lot to discuss today, and, uh, but first, before we do that, I'm going to ask you to direct your attention uh, to the big screen here where we're going to be playing a video for you, please. The University at Albany is an engine of opportunity, fueled by our unique mix of academic excellence, internationally recognized research, and world-class faculty. We relentlessly pursue possibilities 
create connections, and open opportunities locally and globally with a single-minded purpose to empower our students, faculty, and campus communities to author their own success. This is the University at Albany. What you just heard was the University at Albany's new mission statement. And guess what? You helped create it. Over the past few months, over a thousand individuals, faculty, staff, and students have actively participated in creating the new strategic plan that will guide the University at Albany for the next five years. Your active engagement and participation have been an invaluable part of this process. Together, we've crafted the core priorities that will allow us to be a leading public research university. Student success, research excellence, diversity and inclusion, internationalization, and engagement and service. Priority one, student success. By promoting academic achievement and personal growth, we will prepare you Albany students to succeed in their careers and in all aspects of their lives as engaged citizens. We will do this by investing in academic programs, enhancing the student experience, and more deeply integrating teaching and experiential education. Priority two, research excellence. We will strengthen UAlbany's research, scholarship, and creative pursuits that address societal challenges, advance human knowledge, and drive innovation and discovery. This will be accomplished through recruiting strong faculty, staff, and graduate students and empowering them to engage in innovative research. Priority three, diversity and inclusion. UAlbany's diversity in our people and our ideas drives excellence in everything that we do. To that end, we commit to recruiting and retaining faculty, staff, administrators, and graduate students who better reflect the strong, multi-dimensional diversity of our undergraduate students. We will also foster an inclusive campus climate and learning environment. Priority four, internationalization. We will prepare our students to be globally engaged citizens while expanding UAlbany's international visibility and impact. We will do this by ensuring our curriculum prepares students to be globally engaged citizens. And we will integrate internationalization across teaching and research while increasing access to education abroad. Priority five, engagement and service. You Albany will continue to serve as a regional, national, and international partner and anchor institution. We will create scholarship and research opportunities that address societal challenges, serve our local and global communities, and engage neighbors, community members, and alumni in the life of the university. These are the five core priorities that represent our strengths, our identity, and our aspirations. These are the touchstones that will allow us to write the next chapters in our history. And achieving them will allow us to fulfill the University at Albany's promise and vision for the future. To be the nation's leading diverse public research university, providing the leaders, the knowledge and the innovations to create a better world. Thank you. And I want to thank each and every one of you because you are the authors of this plan. And together, we will be the authors of U Albany success. As you heard in the video, over a thousand members of our campus community, faculty, staff, and students directly participated in the creation of this plan. This was a very collaborative process, and it was made possible by our strategic planning committee and by our co-chairs, Provost Jim Steller and Vice President for Student Affairs, Mike Christakis, as well as all the committee members. 
I would like to ask the co-chairs of the committee that are here today to please rise and be recognized. The co-chairs of the Strategic Planning Committee, please rise and be recognized. How about the members of the Strategic Planning Committee? Please rise, those of you who are here, and be recognized as well. This is an amazing group of individuals who worked hard, who devoted their time, who were committed to ensuring the success of this plan. This plan actually has been in development for about a year and a half. I actually arrived to U Albany six months ago, and we launched in earnest uh, as the process was delayed until the new pro president arrived. We relaunched the process, and we launched the strategic planning uh, committee in order to develop this plan that you have heard about, and you will hear more about it. One of the things that I asked was the committee to actively engage uh, community members throughout the university to engage in generating discussions and conversations and feedback that resulted in this final plan. This plan is a result of your hard work, your commitment, your engagement in this process. So I want to thank the, the co-chairs the co of the Strategic Planning Committee. They did an, a, a tremendous amount of work. They were dedicated to this process and they wanted to make sure that we had a successful strategic plan. When I arrived, the Strategic Planning Committee had about 18 members. We expanded that to about 110 members. Some of them just stood up today. And people thought that we were crazy. How could you have so many uh, people in the Strategic Planning Committee? But there was a strategic purpose to this, and they did a wonderful job and developed the five core priorities that you just heard of. And we are delighted uh, by what has resulted today. As you can see the video, later on we will give you uh, the booklets for the Strategic Planning Committee. And this was also the result and engagement of a variety of folks throughout the university. But I want to highlight the role of the Office of Communications and Marketing for creating the video and the book, which you will see shortly. I want to thank Alice Oldfather, uh, Bruce Celeste, Jack Mahoney, and the, office of the, pre the staff in the Office of the President as well for their active engagement in this process. And again, I want to come back to Jim and Mike, the dynamic duo who have worked incredibly hard in order to ensure the success of this process. And through over 30 road shows, they engaged over a thousand individuals, as I said before. And now we want to hear from them and let them share with you some of the insights and next steps regarding the strategic planning process. So Mike and Jim, please come to the stage uh, to discuss next steps and the process. Thank you, President Rodriguez, and good afternoon, everyone. Last October, when President Rodriguez asked Jim and me to co-lead our strategic planning process, he made clear three expectations. First, that the process be representative of campus stakeholders. Specifically, the President called for representation by undergraduate and graduate students, as well as representatives from the University Senate. Second that once a preliminary draft of the university's strategic plan was developed, that feedback be gathered as widely as possible from campus stakeholders. And finally, that the university's strategic plan contribute to UAlbany's upcoming comprehensive fundraising campaign and the university's emerging brand development. You know, of course, that as part of his listening and learning tour, President Rodriguez identified five institutional priorities that we just heard about in the video. As part of our process, we established five priority work groups and appointed two co-chairs for each to lead the work group's efforts. The critical role of the work group co-chairs cannot be overstated. I want to again acknowledge the 10 work group co-chairs and thank them for their leadership and contributions throughout this process. And I'm gonna embarrass you again. As I call your name, if you could just stand so we can recognize you and remain standing, and if you could hold your applause. Leading student success was Jeanette Altariba and Ed Engelbride. 
Research Excellence, Jim Diaz and Simeon Ananu. Diversity and Inclusion, Tamara Miner and Elga Wolfert. Internationalization, Harvey Charles and Lori Feldman. And Leading Engagement and Service, Daryl Wheeler and Mark Benson. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you all very much. As President Rodriguez said, we also expanded the Strategic Planning Committee from 17 original members to 110 faculty, staff, and students. These 100 individuals populated each of the five work groups, ranging in size from about a dozen to just over 30. We just honored the members of the Strategic Planning Committee earlier this afternoon, but again, if we could just express our thanks to them by a round of applause if you were on the committee. Thank you very much. The work undertaken by these five work groups between November 1st and December 8th was instrumental in shaping the final plan. In order to gather as much feedback on the draft plan as possible, the provost and I launched our now famous, or infamous, strategic planning roadshow on January 18th. What was initially intended to be nine stops turned into a dozen then two dozen, and finally 30 total roadshow sessions with schools and colleges, administrative units, shared governance groups, alumni, and donors. For those of you who participated, you know we used the Poll Everywhere platform to gauge participants' reaction to our priority statements, goals, and proposed mission and vision statements. We know that 814 of you engaged in the polling exercise. We don't know exactly who you are, but we know that 814 of you participated during these roadshow sessions. And with additional feedback through email, the website, and conversations, as the President has indicated, we believe at least 1,000 individuals provided feedback on the draft plan. The roadshow sessions were insightful, engaging, and for Jim and I, energizing. We went into these sessions with the intent to listen and make the plan better, and that is exactly what happened. Taken together, these 30 90-minute roadshow sessions, roughly accounting for 45 hours in all, ultimately resulted in the final version of UAlbany's strategic plan authoring our success. Some of you have since joined us at one or more of the four roundtable discussions held across UAlbany's three campuses. During these roundtables, priority work group members facilitated discussions to start brainstorming about the kinds of action steps our units might take in each priority area. In order for us to truly author our success, we must move swiftly towards the strategic plan's implementation. With that in mind, the provost will outline the path forward as we move from drafting our plan to making our plan a reality. Jim. Thank you, Mike. So now let's turn to action planning at the unit level. There are three elements, we think, to the implementation. First, the action plans will be run through the vice presidents, and they are due to the president on July 2nd. Each vice president will organize their units into action planning teams, and we are doing that now in the provost's office, for example. I am asking each college, school, and the library system to have their action plans submitted to me by June 8th, and we'll go on to discuss what other action plans come out of the provost's office. Second, the format of the action plan has been discussed by the president, and as Mike mentioned, by us at four recent roundtable sessions across campus. As mentioned, we will ask each unit to complete an action planning table and then to write a short description of their plan, as well as a link to whatever they have back on their own home website. Third, we will evaluate the progress of the action plan using agreed upon metrics, which I will discuss in a moment. We envision two structural elements to assist with action planning. First, we will convene an implementation team consisting of about 20 members, including Mike and me as co-chairs, the 10 
chairs, co-chairs of the five strategic planning areas, three members of the administration, including the Office of the President and Vice President for Finance and Administration, five members from academic governance and from the University Senate, and two deans as representatives from, academ from uh, academic management. The implementation team will work over the summer with the president to evaluate the alignment of the action plans with the overall university strategic plan. Second, we will establish a metrics team that will work with the implementation team also over the summer and it will evaluate the action plans on alignment and feasibility of their metrics. We envision a team of six, including two members from institutional research, two from budget, and two from the president's office. This unit will also develop the strategic plan implementation scorecard that will be used to evaluate the ongoing planning success, but particularly at the end of each academic years, and this will go on for five years. The approved action plans will be posted on the university strategic planning website. This website remains our public face. The overall goal is to enter the fall of 2018-19 academic year with a strategic plan set to be implemented as action plans. We will apply the ongoing principle of common sense. For example, if there are reasons to consult with faculty who are not present over the summer, we will allow time for that in the early fall. A final element of strategic planning, which the President has repeatedly mentioned, is strategic budgeting. Work on that step will commence now that we have been joined yesterday by our new CFO, Todd Foreman. It's all on you, Todd. At this point, we expect to issue a call for proposals in the early fall. Each funding request will be tied to the action plan and the metrics also will feature a budget plan within the unit of what it can contribute. We are planning a rapid turnaround so that requests, for example, submitted in the fall can be implemented in the spring of that year. Much details remain to be discussed and we will get back to you with all of them through the website and future communications. For now, thank you. It has been a pleasure working with all of you this year. Once again, uh, thank you so very much. And in recognition for all the uh, great work and token of appreciation uh, for their commitment, uh, we present this gift to the provost and to the vice president for student affairs for all your excellent work. Thank Excellent. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now we have our plan for our university. And so now it's time to write the next chapters in the history of the university at Albany. We've got a great video. We've got a great booklet, which you will receive regarding, if you don't already have it, regarding the strategic planning process. And we have a newly unveiled website as well regarding uh, the strategic plan. So now that all this is in place, Jim has alluded to, to the implementation process and the action plans that we will develop in order to continue to move this university in the right direction with your help, with your engagement, with your collaboration, and your support. So in order to, as we think about uh, these initiatives and as we think about action plans, I said, well, why not start with the president developing an action plan so I can serve as an example uh, to all my colleagues here so that we can all lead together uh, by example. So let me share with you some of the major themes that I've developed as part as my action plan, which are closely linked and tied with the strategic plan. But first and foremost, in everything that we do, we must be strategic, we must be selective, and we must be organized on our path forward. But we must also instill a sense of urgency. We need to promote leadership through shared goals, responsibilities, teamwork, and accountability. 
The draft action plan will also serve as a framework to be developed and expanded by the strategic plan implementation team, which Jim talked about. So here are the nine areas which I've identified. Of course, number one, implementation plan for our strategic plan. And as you know, our strategic plan will guide us in the months and years ahead. And this process is already underway. An implementation team will be established, as alluded to by the provost, and we are now finalizing the structure for this team, and you will be receiving information on that shortly. As we develop our action plans for the strategic plan, we must ensure intersections between institutional core priorities and strategic goals and those of the divisions, colleges, schools, and other units. Number two undergraduate and graduate enrollment. And through my listening tours, you've heard me speak a lot about this. We need to seriously consider as a public research one urban serving university what our mix of undergraduate and graduate students is at U Albany. What is the optimum size for our university? Is it 17,000? Is it 18,000? Is it 20,000 students? I have asked the provost, the vice president for finance and administration, now Todd, first responsibility, and our Vice President Christakis to begin to formally analyze what our student carrying capacity is at UAlbany, to determine what are our stress points in our academic programming, facilities, and student support services so we know what our target goals are. As a consequence, we need to establish a strategic enrollment management action plan across our undergraduate and our graduate programs. The provost will be leading this effort. Last month, we also had a summit focusing on online education. This is a very promising initiative that will have concrete goals and measurable outcomes focusing on developing excellent quality online academic programs that focus on the growing educational demands and needs at the regional and national level. And they also speak to our priority of promoting access at our university. And we must also focus on increasing the retention and graduation rates of our students. As I was telling a group of uh, colleagues the other day, and or asked them, what percent of the students that came in in the fall of 2017 at U, to UW, UAlbany, what percent of those students expected to graduate? 100%, right? And so anything shy of that target, uh, we're missing the boat. And of course, I know that life gets in the way, priorities change, students move along, but 100% of the students that graduate, that came to UAlbany, expect to graduate from UAlbany. And so we must ensure that we maintain the highest standards of academic excellence while ensuring the success of our students. Number three, initiatives impacting our budget. And yes, I know I said that uh, if we wanted to increase our budgets, we needed to look at Todd. Uh, but no, that is not Todd's responsibility. That is the responsibility of every single person in this room, to increase the resources that we have at the university at Albany so we can address as a community our core priorities. So together, collaboratively, collectively, we need to examine our budgeting processes and be even better stewards of the public trust that has been bestowed upon us. We need to focus on increasing uh, resources. And as I said, let me reiterate, that is everyone's responsibility. We may need to realign resources, especially in response to patterns and trends around student enrollment as tuition revenue is the greatest share of our campus resource base. If we do not exceed our target enrollments, we simply cannot expect to keep our current level of resources. This applies to all units across our campuses. Simply put, we have to increase and grow our revenues. 
We have to continue to be good stewards of our resources. We need to focus on eliminating redundancies and creating synergies across our three campuses. We need to focus on increasing state funds. We need to focus on increasing enrollment, particularly at the graduate level, online education, increasing our master's degree program enrollment, increasing our PhD enrollment as a research one university, it's imperative. We must also focus on research scholarship and increasing research expenditures. The scholarship benefits all our faculty, staff, and students, and it increases the resources that we as an institution have to distribute to address our core priorities. We need to continue to expand and grow our philanthropy. We are in the middle of our silent phase, did I say silent phase, of our capital campaign, which will go public uh, in the fall, in October. We need to continue to increase philanthropy and gifts to this institution that primarily go to support our students through student scholarships. That is critical for the success of our institution. We need to take a comprehensive look at our auxiliary services and see how we continue to generate funding for this institution. Along these lines, we as a community need to conduct careful assessments of our initiatives and our programs. What works incredibly well? Let's keep it. What would work well with a few tweaks? Let's tweak it. What does not work well for years and will never work well? Let's eliminate those initiatives and, and reallocate those resources to initiatives that have proven to be very successful. We must rethink who we are as an institution of higher education. Fourth, streamlining processes and increasing efficiencies through effective use of technology. We have too many paper processes at the university at Albany. We need to start getting used to the new technological innovations, and we have a number of initiatives that are on the way. We need to invest in developing our technology and expanding our resources in order to create more efficient, more effective, more streamlined processes that do not depend on paper but on technology. Also, U Albany, as you may already know, I'm not telling you anything new, is a highly decentralized university. Every unit wants to run independent and autonomous programs. We need to rethink how we do this as a university because there are many redundancies. Let's create synergies across this institution. We really need to address this as a critical goal for our institution. Fifth diversity and inclusion. We must create a campus climate that is welcoming and nurturing in which all individuals feel welcomed and are welcomed. We need to increase diversity among our students, our, especially our graduate students, our faculty, our staff, and our administrators. It's not only about success, access I should say, it's not only about access, it's not only about diversity, it's about success, it's about excellence. And this institution has been recognized nationally as an engine of economic opportunity for our students, as a leader in Latino and, student, Latino and Latina student success among the 10 top institutions in the country. We are providing access, but we are providing a quality and excellent in, uh, education to our students that is allowing them to be successful. So let's develop more cohesive holistic and systematic programmatic strategies that promote and establish an inclusive campus climate. Number six, we need to continue to reduce the economic burden on our students. We know this is an issue across our country. We need to focus on access, and affordability and be the engine of opportunity that is becoming the University at Albany's trademark. Additional funding through enrollment, research, expenditures, and philanthropy is needed to just continue to generate student scholarships for our students here at the University at Albany. Again, this involves each 
and every one of us in this process. Allocation and reallocation of resources is something that affects everyone at the University at Albany. We also need to continue to focus on increasing student employment opportunities at the university. We know that students that work at the university, that live in the university and study at the university have both higher retention and graduation rates. And so that is something we need to focus on as well. Number seven, professional development of our faculty and staff. Doing so will foster a culture of excellence. Faculty and staff are critical to our success, and we cannot lose sight of this. We always focus on student success, but in order to have successful students, we need successful staff and we need successful faculty. We are a family that must continue to address the success of our students, of our faculty, and of our staff. Therefore, we look forward to strengthening our onboarding practices and require that all newly hired faculty and staff participate in U Albany's orientation seminars to instill, instill a sense of community. In the long term, mid to long term, I would also like to see an Office for Faculty Affairs focusing on the professional development and the growth of our faculty. A focus on institutional professional development opportunities for faculty and staff is imperative as we continue to move forward. We also need to provide our academic leaders, and in particular our chairs, the professional training in order to become successful chairs in what they do in terms of scholarship, service, and teaching. So we must create expectations and set practices for accountability while providing rewards where feasible. And the provost is currently working on this initiative as well. We must continue to work together to create a sense of community, which is number eight. Our goal is to develop a tighter, more cohesive, more integrated, and welcoming community. We must promote engagement and recognition. We must recognize exemplars in faculty and staff, and together we need to celebrate our accomplishments and success stories. And there are many to share across this institution, the capital region, the state, nationally, and yes, globally as well. And finally, maintaining our focus on major programmatic initiatives that are ongoing at the University at Albany. We need to develop academic and research programs that build on our geographic strengths. There are many to share in this area. It is imperative that we revitalize and reorganize graduate programs at UAlbany and create a graduate school. And you will be hearing a lot about those recommendations as well. We need to find funding to renovate the Skylar building in our downtown campus so that we can grow our engineering college and infuse UAlbany into the life's blood of the city of Albany as well. Our two new, newest colleges, the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences and the College of Emergency Preparedness, Homeland Security and Cybersecurity are home to the fastest growing programs. We need to continue to support those colleges. And we have significant and important programs in cybersecurity and climate and severe weather, which we must also capitalize on. Capitalize on. We have incredibly important programs for our institutions and our community in the areas of education, the arts and humanities, social sciences, business, public health, public policy, and social welfare. We need to continue to strengthen these areas to build this institution and to provide an education of quality, rigor, and excellence to all our students. Our criminal justice program was recently ranked number two in the country. Congratulations uh, to the dean for quite a remarkable achievement. We need, as a community, we need to continue to emulate these success stories that make us a Research One institution. 
We also have great contributions in athletics as well, including the number one team in men's lacrosse in the country. The number one team in men's lacrosse in the country. We have achieved national and global excellence in track and field, and we must recognize the contributions of our colleagues as well. In summary, we have much to be proud of. We have accomplished many, many things as a great institution of higher education, but additional changes are needed. And I know as a sociologist that organizational change is difficult. It can be cumbersome and no one wants to engage in change as we are very comfortable where we sit. But change is part of institutions of higher education and we must welcome and we must embrace change. If we are a research one institution, then we need to be a research one institution which is reflected in our graduate, particularly our doctoral programs and our scholarship and research expenditures. If we are a research one institution, then we have to look like one. We have to behave and live like a research one institution. And we have to have these characteristics reflected in the fabric of our institution, the University at Albany. My dear friends and colleagues, yes, these are exciting times for our institution. With our strategic plan and the forthcoming action plans, we can set the stage for this institution and have significant transformational impacts for decades to come. Our time is now, and we are clearly a university on the move. But we need your continued leadership, your engagement, and your active support. I am very confident that each and every one of you can find a great place in our five core priorities and in our strategic plan, and we ask you to embark with us in this amazing trip to continue to transform our institution. The launch of our strategic plan is in itself a magnificent accomplishment. But we are at the beginning of this plan, and we need, as I said before, to write the next few chapters together, collaboratively, as one institution in the history of the university at Albany. Authoring our success is going to be about how we each choose to contribute to the collective success of the university at Albany. It is today with great excitement that I am looking forward to the next stages of this journey that we have embarked on together. And I am truly delighted to have been selected as the 20th president of this great institution and have such great faculty, great staff, and great students that will continue to move us in the directions that we need in order to become a nationally and globally recognized university in whose core priority speaks to our, whose core our strategic plan speaks to our core priorities. Once again, I wanna thank you each and every one of you for everything that you do, for everything that you will continue to do, and we are launching this journey together, and I am delighted to be part of this plan and to be part of this community today. So once again, muchísimas gracias. Thank you so very much. Karen, uh, I believe we have some time for a Q&A. Is that correct? Karen would love to, so we have some time for Q&A. Any questions that uh, Jim or Mike can answer? <laughs> we also have a new dean and a new vice president of finance and administration. They can answer many questions as well. Thanks. Um, I don't know if the provost um, or the Vice President for uh, Student Success can answer these, so I may have to put them to you. 
Um, I was very interested in your action plan. It was very interesting to hear. And at um, one point, you, you said that the, um, the sort of the issues of budgeting and resource allocation are the responsibility of every person in this room. Now, that's a very interesting sort of nod toward the possibility of participatory budgeting planning. H has there been any planning so far to sort of make that happen? I know there are models for participatory budget that involve people at different institutional levels in, in, in different sort of ways. But I just, I just don't know if the university has, has sort of thought about that. And thank you, Jim. I appreciate your question. And we've had a lot of conversations, significant conversations, uh, when uh, uh, Jim Van Voorst was here regarding how do we continue to have conversations about budget and the budgeting process. Now that we have a new vice president for finance and administration, Todd uh, Foreman, we'll continue to have these conversations. I think it is critical uh, for people at this university, right? Uh, we are a public uh, in university, and so budgets should be accessible, budgets should be available, and should, we should engage our communities in these discussions about our budget because I truly meant uh, when I said that you know it is our responsibility everybody's responsibility in this room and outside of this room at U Albany to think about uh, our resources to think about how we build and expand and uh, continue to increase our resources and we can all play a very important role in so many different ways so Jim the answer is yes we will continue to have these conversations and yes we will continue to engage the university uh, community uh, in these processes and discussions. And so Todd and I have a lot of conversations and our uh, uh, executive team uh, to talk and see how we move this process forward. Behind you, Paul. Hey, thank you for everything in the presentation. I wanted to ask about student enrollments because I know a couple of years ago we had talked about moving to 20,000 and in a department where I am in sociology where we have a lot of classes at capacity and every semester now we have 15 to 20 classes that they can't find rooms for. And I'm curious, you mentioned earlier that we were gonna try to evaluate where we wanted to go and I just wanted to make sure we were gonna take our situation, particularly on the uptown campus, into account in really deciding on an appropriate volume for undergraduates especially. Right, and so the goal is really to look at our three campuses, right? Our downtown campus, our health sciences campus, and our uptown campus in terms of resources and space for classroom teaching, et cetera. But we have to look holistically at our student enrollment, and I don't think we've done that to date, right? Uh, there was, uh, once upon a time, uh, this idea of 20,000 students by, by 2020. Uh, and when I came in, uh, I'm a demographer, some of you uh, may know that, and I studied population changes, and so in order to uh, make projections in terms of future population growth, I look at previous population growth and see what are the trajectories, et cetera. And so the numbers were clearly not taking us in a direction of 20,000 by 2020, actually uh, quite the opposite. And so I told my team it's time that we rethink our strategies. First of all, as I said in my uh, comments, uh, what is the optimum capacity? Uh, for the university, not only in terms of how many freshmen or first year students we're able to admit, what is the residence hall capacity? What is the classroom capacity? What is the faculty capacity? What is the capacity of the services we provide to our students in the library, in health, mental health, and things of that nature? How many students can we accommodate? And so uh, my team is working on developing some models that take a comprehensive look at all these issues from infrastructure to, uh, to other factors as well to come up with some ideas of where is it that we should be and what are the sort of the, the low sort of uh, projection medium and high projections, and then work from those numbers. And I think that if we have uh, included in this model all the relevant models, uh, uh, variables, I should say, we'll come up with some models that I think will be feasible uh, into the future. But we're certainly uh, looking at this as well. And I think where we can experience most growth, most growth is at our graduate level, particularly at the master's and PhD level, which we have, unfortunately, for the past 10 years or so, and you've heard me say this before, I've had uh, significant declines uh, in, in, in graduate enrollment. Our uh, dean for graduate studies made a presentation the other day, and he indicated in the past 10 years, we've had a decline of about 14.9% or 15% in graduate enrollment at both the master's and PhD level. This is not uh, an enrollment trend, 
going in this way that is sustainable, especially for a research one institution. So we clearly need to look at that. What I've also asked the team is to look at what is the, the sort of the optimal ratio, if you will, between undergraduate and graduate student enrollment at UAlbany. Right now we're about 75% undergraduate, 25% uh, graduate, which is about average across the country. I personally think uh, that we should probably be 70% undergraduate and 30% graduate, but that remains to be seen. We'll take a look at the numbers and the ideas and the resources generated, and then I think we, we will begin uh, to have conversations with faculty, staff, and students, university, senate, etc., about the numbers and the processes and the models that are being generated before we make a final decision on where we want to move ahead. I think for me, part of uh, authoring our success is really people feeling like they do have a voice. And one of the things that was very impressive to me about the roadshow, I was a little bit skeptical when I went to the roadshow event. And the document that I read at the end of those 30 or 450 hours or however many hours changed. And for me, it really made me feel like someone's listening. And I just want to say thank you to Mike and Jim for really doing that so well and for your whole team for taking this seriously, that the voices of the people that are going to implement this really matter. So thank you. Thank you. And we really... Uh... And we really appreciate that, that comment because I saw the many different iterations of the strategic plan draft document as it moved forward. And I can tell you, uh, this document changed extensively and significantly thanks to the input that we received from faculty, staff, students, alumni, and donors as well. So uh, these folks were out there, uh, you know, 30 road shows, uh, plus the four round tables, uh, 90 minutes each. I'm not sure how they did their day job. I'm not sure what, you know, how they're going to keep busy in the next few months, although I've got some ideas for them uh, <laughs> that I will share with them uh, later on. But yes, this was part of the process. The process was to engage the community, but also to allow folks uh, the opportunity to express themselves and know that they're really being heard. Now, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we got a recommendation A, which was, then we got a recommendation C, and they were mutually exclusive. If if you had A, you really couldn't have C, but I, the co-chairs and everybody else did a great job in trying to pull all this feedback together. So um, I'm sure that uh, both Mike and Jim Steller greatly and sincerely appreciate your feedback. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm um, curious about the graduate enrollment issue. and. Um, I know you mentioned that there's going to be a graduate school, and I, I think I heard at the last chair's meeting that there was a study about graduate enrollments. I think it would be helpful to know what is behind the loss of enrollments, because we're getting, um, we're getting encouraged to go out and you know, beat the bushes and bring in people, but we don't really know what it is that's preventing them from coming. So do we have a sense of why the enrollments have dropped? So it, it's not a national trend, is it? Or is it? Or I, I guess it's a very general question. OK. So we, we had a task force about a dozen people, Jim? about a dozen people led by the dean uh, uh, for, for graduate studies. And he's been on his own road show uh, presenting uh, the document, which is a very uh, comprehensive document. They analyze uh, quite a few factors. We've got numbers for all the programs and all the departments and all the schools and all the colleges. We know what programs have experienced actually during the same time period, significant growth. And we know which programs have uh, experienced significant declines in terms of graduate graduate enrollment. I think we have a pretty good uh, idea of why we are declining in terms of enrollment. Some, yes, have been national patterns that we've seen. Uh, and look at the Chronicle for Higher Education today. Uh, there's a whole series of articles uh, focusing on a number of academic programs in terms of declining enrollments and what programs are doing to increase uh, their enrollments. Uh, I think that the, uh, the report has about 11, 12 recommendations, Jim? 
11 recommendations, uh, which are very extensive and cover a variety of areas uh, and issues. And one of them happens to be uh, creating a graduate school to create a more structured and organized and systematic process and much more collaboration with the departments, the academic programs, the schools, and the colleges. But there's 10 other recommendations focusing on uh, taking a comprehensive look at scholarships, financial uh, funding for our graduate students, among many others. I believe, uh, Karen, if I'm not mistaken, that the next University Senate meeting, uh, the dean will be there to present uh, uh, the, the report on the graduate school. Is that correct? Well, now we can have an official invitation. <laughs> okay. So we'll make sure that happens. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. And so the idea is, and we will, this document, we will make it public. And so it's, uh, a lot of people have already seen it. You were at one of the meetings where we discussed the, uh, the, the report. But one of the goals is to really focus on how we continue to enhance and strengthen our graduate programs. I mean, it is an issue of very serious concern as a research one institution. And, uh, and of course, we need to, uh, at one of the meetings I had with the, the provost and I actually had with, with department chairs, uh, we had a, a conversation about this. And one of the, one of the uh, areas was how do we increase the stipends, uh, the number of stipends for graduate students, and how do we increase the uh, amount of the stipends uh, for graduate students in order to make them more competitive across the country. And as I said there, I'll say here, yes, we need to look at what funding mechanisms there are in order to increase uh, the number of stipends and graduate stipends. And we need to do this in multiple ways, as I said before. Everybody shares some responsibility in this. And so we need to continue to identify state funding at the University of Albany, at Albany, to increase our resources and increase the stipends. We need to have, uh, continue to focus on philanthropy, to focus on uh, scholarships and stipends for our graduate students. And we need to focus on scholarship and ex externally funded grants so that our faculty can also generate grants that they will continue to fund graduate students. That's a critical element as well and so if we look only at the state providing the funding for graduate students it's not going to be successful it has to be a holistic model and we have to do that through state funding philanthropy and research so again everyone plays a critical role in this process yes I know that we've been talking about graduate education but you mentioned synergies so in my thought process what are we doing for the conversion of undergraduates that are here into our various graduate programs? You know, and that, that's an excellent question, right? Because you know, we've, we have this large number of undergraduate students at UAlbany. What are we doing to, to channel uh, those undergraduate students in some, into some of our graduate programs, right? And I know there's a lot of efforts that are taking place in that area, but that is also where, for example, academic advising uh, plays a critical role. That's where faculty mentors can play a critical role in ensuring that our students enroll in our graduate programs. As you all know, we close to 40% of our uh, undergraduate students are from underrepresented minority groups, 18% African American, 17% Hispanic, Latino, and Latina. But yet, close to 15% of our graduate students are from underrepresented minority groups. So we clearly have a good pipeline and a strong pipeline in order to uh, facilitate and ensure that students move on to our graduate programs at the university at Albany. Uh, thus, thinking about these advising, mentoring, but also creating new types of programs, four plus ones, right, in which a student can get a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in five years. That's a critical strategy. Continuing to build interdisciplinary programs, academic programs across schools and colleges, between schools and colleges is also another way in which we can do that. We talk about diversifying the pipeline. We've got a great pipeline of diverse, underrepresented minority students at UAlbany, we need to ensure that we need to continue to funnel them up the pipeline so we have more graduate students for, that are from these minority groups, and by the way, that get their master's degrees and get their PhDs and eventually become faculty members that allow us to diversify our faculty and our staff at the university at Albany as well, which is of critical importance. Thank you. 
Once again, thank you everybody for being here. Karen, thank you for the invitation. It's always a pleasure. Um, before you go, I would like us to, uh, all of us to join me in thank you, uh, President Rodriguez, for this, uh, this uh, presentation. Thank you. So as we move forward with our new plan, um, I want to remind you to re remain engaged in the implementation process. Um, you were great at showing up uh, at, uh, at the road shows and at the round tables, but it's now it's crucial that you also participate, that ask your, the leaders in your departments and in your, in your units of uh, how this plan is gonna look like going forward. And, uh, with that, I officially need to ask you, are there any other business? And uh, seeing none, we adjourn. Thank you so much for coming.